Alright, my name is David, and I'm accompanied by Chase, John, and Austin. Let's talk about column chromatography. Okay, we all know that in biotechnology, companies engineer cells to formulate a product such as a protein. But how do we get that product out of a mixed solution of other molecules? Biotech companies use a method called column chromatography. A column generally works as a sieve that filters out undesired molecules. Of course, there are a variety of different forms of chromatography, but their specific uses, such as paper and thin layer. But here, we'll just focus on the four main column types. Our objectives are simple, and they encompass the four columns. 1. Understand how gel filtration chromatography works based on size. 2. Understand how ion exchange chromatography separates molecules based on polarity. 3. Know how affinity chromatography uses antibodies to filter molecules based on shape. And 4. Know how hydrophobic interaction chromatography separates molecules based on hydrophobicity. Right, let's start with gel filtration, aka size exclusion. Known as the simplest form of column chromatography, this column takes advantage of a molecule's size to separate it from others. A column works by allowing a solution of molecules to a gel which contains small beads. These beads have properties that allow them to separate molecules based on their physical and chemical traits. In gel filtration, these beads have small channels meandering through them. Larger molecules pass around the beads, while smaller molecules travel through them. In this process, larger molecules ex exit the gel first, while smaller molecules travel through the network of tunnels, lengthening their transition through the column. Each filtered solution is collected in stages, or fractions. Each fraction contains progressively smaller molecules. There are qualities of the column that affect its efficacy. The longer the column, the greater the trend of separation. The wider the column, the greater quantity allowed through at any given time. The larger the beads, the more power behind the resin. Now to Austin and Ion Exchange. Oi. Ion Exchange chromatography is used to separate molecules based on the charge that they take on at various pH values. It can be used to separate anything from whole proteins to amino acids. The first step is to fill a column with resin beads of a neutral charge. And then, those beads are given a charge opposite of that of the desired molecule using elution buffers, so that the undesired molecules elute first, while the desired molecules stick to the resin beads. This is where the two types of ion exchange chromatography come into play. If the desired molecule has a negative charge, cation exchange chromatography is used. So the column is primed with an acidic buffer. This buffer will give the beads a positive charge due to the presence of positively charged hydronium ions and acids. This will cause the negatively charged desired molecule to stick to the resin beads, while the positively charged undesired molecules blow out. If the desired molecules are positive, then anion exchange chromatography is used. The column is then rinsed with a base, which contains negative hydroxide ions and gives the beads a net negative charge. This forces the desired positive molecules to stick to the resin beads, while the undesired negative molecules continue to flow out and elute from the column. Now on to John for affinity chromatography. Affinity chromatography separates molecules based on shape or unique functional groups. The protein's shape is due to the amino acid composition, groups, and folding. This affects the structure, function, and purification. To separate by shape, affinity chromatography uses antibodies to recognize and bind a protein. Antibodies bind with their antigenic epitope on the protein and pull out the protein of interest. Since it is very specific, a single protein can be isolated and removed. The challenge of affinity chromatography is finding the complementary molecule to attach to the resin beads. Now we move on to hydrophobic interaction chromatography. This method of column chromatography is the newest method found and it involves separating molecules based upon their hydrophobicity. Hydrophobic interaction chromatography works similar to how size exclusion and ion exchange chromatographies operate. The solution of proteins are mixed in with a high salt buffer that reduces the solvation of the molecule. As solvation goes down, the protein's hydrophobic regions become exposed, which are then absorbed by the media. The more hydrophobic a protein is, the lower concentration of a buffer needed to promote its binding to the media. To elute the proteins, a salt gradient is used, and this process can be assisted by detergents and by organic modifiers. This method of photography is done in order to purify a protein solution while allowing it to retain functionality. Created using Powtoon.